Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa and welcome to Wet Paint Contemporary. Have you ever asked the question, what do I need to start in fluid paint pouring? Well, I'm gonna break it down to you in four different categories. So let's get started and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to get in order to start your fluid paint pouring journey. Hey guys, so here we go. Now I know that this looks like a lot, and it is a lot, and guess what? You don't need all of this to start. Especially if you're a beginner, you do not need all of this stuff. I put all this here to give you examples of different types of things that you can use for your paint pouring, okay? So we are gonna break this up into four different sections. Number one is the paint. Okay, number two are the mediums, and there are many, many more mediums, but I don't want to bring any more out because I don't want it to be overwhelming. This is enough stuff here. So number one, paint. Number two, medium. Number three, surfaces, different types of surfaces you can pour on. And again, this is not all the types of surfaces you can pour on, but this is great for just to start out. Okay, I'm gonna go over everything individually. And, number, and the last one, number four, are some of the extra tools that you may need and or want to use eventually, okay? So let's get started with uh, topic number one, which is paint. All right, so section number one, topic number one, the essential thing you need is acrylic paints. Now, I have heard other people use, um, you know, gouache and all that, but basically, in paint pouring, mainly we use acrylics, and we have all different types of paints here. These are two paints, heavier body paints. These are from Arteza. These are great paints, a little more on the expensive side. Okay, you have the same type of paint, Artist Loft, that is a little cheaper, okay? And then you have what's called pre-mixed pouring paint, meaning you do not need to add anything. You do not need to add any medium whatsoever. Okay, this is a brand called um, American Crafts Beautiful Paint. I just started trying, um, oh, I'm sorry, this is the Folk Art, my bad. This is the Folk Art, this is pre-mixed, okay. These two are Folk Art, and these are pretty reasonable. These are a little more expensive. You have them, these are the American Crafts, okay. You can get these on Amazon. Uh, these are beautiful paints. That's also pre-mixed. This is called Primal Flow. This is also pre-mixed. So all these types of paint, these are all acrylics, different brands, and all these you do not have to add anything to it. You could pour them right out of the bottle or in a cup and do a pour with it and we'll get to that in another video with the different types of pours and all that this is like more for beginners right now okay so i really felt like i need and wanted to do like real real beginner um videos but also i'm going to do more that's like beginner to intermediate and maybe intermediate to advanced we'll see you know but um, and even if you are not a beginner and you know what, you never heard of folk art, you're going to get something out of this video as well, okay? So these are like heavier body paints where you definitely need a medium. And your medium could actually, I've heard people just use water, okay? But we'll get to the mediums afterwards. Now this is the cheapest way to start. Now for beginner beginners who have never ever did paint pouring before, I would suggest that you start off with what's called craft paint, okay? This is deco art. Let's see, I don't know if these are all deco art or not in this little, yeah, these are a lot of my deco arts. These can be, I've gotten some of these for like $1.50, $2 each. I think that you can get maybe three colors to start off with, maybe four at the most, $2 each. You know, again, you can get these on Amazon as, as well, or like your local craft store. They're pretty inexpensive, really nice colors, and this is a great way to start. You do not have to invest a lot of money, because let's say you want to just try paint pouring, and you don't like it. 
well, you don't want to go ahead and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of paint if you're never going to do this again. Then let's say you love it. You can continue using it to practice till you, you know, get a little more comfortable with the process. And then you can graduate into uh, better quality paints. Okay, this, this would be like maybe a step up, like Artist Loft. This is from Michaels. This is pretty inexpensive, maybe depending on the color, five, six dollars each, something like that. And then you can get into Arteza, which is more expensive, but very, very, very high quality. And then you could also try the, the premixed, okay? So there's all different types of acrylics, but I would suggest if you are an absolute beginner, I would suggest you start off with the craft paint. It is very inexpensive and it's a great way to start. Okay, essential number two, mediums. I just brought out most of my um, mediums just to show you how many different mediums there are. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, one of the main ones that most paint pour, paint artists that do paint pouring use is something called Floetrol, okay? And you can get this in the hardware store. I usually get this either online and on Amazon or I get it at Home Depot. I'm sure a lot of, this basically is used uh, for like house paint when you're using and one of those spraying machines to keep it more fluid, okay? This makes paint fluid and also creates what's called cells. Now, I'm not gonna get into like which, you know, medium is better. Honestly, a lot of them are very similar. A lot of, some of them are bad. Some of them are great, okay? I just, I'm the type of person I like to try out uh, different things. Now, when I like something, I get something big of it, okay? Um, when I'm not sure and I'm just trying something, I usually get a small bottle. So that's another bonus tip, too, is that if you want to try new mediums or new paints, I would suggest just get a small bottle of them so that if you don't like it, you don't feel like you wasted so much money, okay? So I like the Deco Art, and I always use Flow Troll. The rest of them, a lot of them, I just try it out, all right? So this is something that you need that is essential to paint boring to make the paint more fluid. In another video, you know, I could show you how to uh, mix the paint with the medium and what consistency it should be. But again, a lot of that is personal preference. A lot of that is also the type of pour you are doing and um, the paint itself as well. How thick or thin the paint is, uh, some certain paints are absolutely better than others. Some are a little heavier body, some are more medium body. So you may need more of the uh, medium. So a lot, some of it is personal preference, the type of paint, the type of medium, and what type of pour you are doing. I think, again, I think I'm going to get into that maybe in another video. Certain pores you need a more thicker consistency and others you want it more fluid. Okay, and that is like my opinion uh, for doing this for a while that I absolutely, depending on the medium I'm using, the type of paint I'm using, I actually switch it up if I'm doing a specific type of pour. If I'm doing a ring pour, maybe I want a little thicker. Um, if I'm doing, let's say, a Dutch pour or like a waterfall pour, um, I want maybe more fluid. So again, it's personal preference. And yeah, so in another video, I'm probably gonna like maybe try a couple of different um, mediums and we can mix them. Also, I have a playlist of, it's called Battle of the Pouring Mediums. I did it quite a long time ago and that's why I was kind of trying out all these type of mediums, kind of seeing which one I liked more, which one I thought was like garbage, which ones I really liked. All right, so let's get on to the third essential that we need. Okay, so part three is the surfaces. Obviously, this is a canvas. You can get these online. You can get them from Michaels. If you get them from Michaels, you can get them. Sometimes they have sales um, half off. Usually, you can get a pack of these of 10 for about $20. And a lot of times they have a 50% off sale, you can, so you can get 10 for, 10 for $10, it's awesome. 
You can also go to the Dollar Tree. They have them in the Dollar Tree, a little smaller. Uh, they are not as good quality, but when you're first starting out, I would suggest you go to the Dollar Tree and get some canvases there. And actually buying in bulk is better because it comes out cheaper. Sorry guys, I was interrupted, but I am back. So the Dollar Tree. 10 of these uh, shapes for, by Crafter Square for a dollar. Perfect to practice on and you can make many different projects with these. Uh, I also got these at the Dollar Tree. Um, these I got off of Amazon. There was like 30 of them for maybe $10, which is great. You can make a lot of different projects with them. I've done that. Like Dollar Tree, you can pull over this. You have both sides. It's really great. Um, also, you can paint over glass. Not the best job. This was my first try, but you can paint over glass vases. You can make many different projects with paint pouring. So these are the surfaces. Um, also, you can use canvas board. Canvas board is much cheaper than canvas, but be careful because they can uh, warp if you paint over them. So that is my tips for the surfaces you can use. So the fourth part is your tools and accessories. So let's start over here with the butane torch and the gas. The butane torch is essential because you can use it to pop bubbles in your paint if you have any air bubbles so it will reduce cracking. Um, also it helps create cells in your painting. Now cells are something like this, these little areas here, or in this painting over here. Okay, so that is what that is good for. And please go into the kitchen and accessory part, let's say in any online store, it could be Amazon, anything. Go into the kitchen accessories, it will be cheaper, okay? Now here, you can get many of these right in your kitchen right now for free. This is literally the bottom of a bottle. I pour the paint over it onto the canvas. It's literally free. I got this out of my kitchen. This is for a funnel pour. And I bought these specifically for uh, pour painting, but honestly you can use any kitchen strainer and to do a strainer pour. And you can go to the Dollar Tree and get as many as you want and I tried different ones because they have different size holes but you use your kitchen strainer right now and use that okay so that's good if you are on a budget um, these are from the Dollar Tree again by Crafter Square and this is to mix your paint okay so craft sticks are essential obviously cups there's many different types of cups you got bigger cups depending on the size of your pour the plastic ones and then you have ones with a lid sometimes if you um, oh, if you mix too much paint you can store these away okay these are great and I got maybe 50 of them for three dollars so that's beautiful in my local discount store now here this is for fun I this is like more for spin art and um, this is great. Uh, again, this is just a regular Lazy Susan. And this is like 10 bucks. So this is just for fun, something add. You do not need this, okay? I got this, but this is something that you can get if you want to experiment. Now you're gonna need something to pour. I'm gonna put this over here. To pour your, when you are pouring on a canvas or any object, you, want something to lean on and drip onto. So either you can use literally a lasagna pan, which I have, and I've had this for about a year and it is still here today. And now I use this just to dry. I put it to the side to dry my paintings on. Okay, so you can use this and I have this little extra piece here to make it more sturdy. Go to your discount stores and you can get this, it's great. Okay, and all your paint will be caught in there. Okay, or if you want to put your painting here, pour on it, you can get this silicone mat. Now what I suggest is with the silicone mat, you go and you look for one 
in the kitchen accessory aisle. It's like a baking silicone mat. They are much, much cheaper. This one was like maybe $15. I have seen some where it's an art silicone mat and they're 40 and that's ridiculous, okay? Um, and this is good because it catches the paint and once the paint dries, you can actually peel off the paint like this and you can actually use it for other projects like jewelry, I've tried it in resin art, so that's great for that. So you never waste any of your paint. Um, you'll need some gloves if you want to wear gloves to protect your hands and some paper towels on hand for any spills, okay? So again, you do not need all of this stuff and a lot of this you can find in your own home or you can find at your Dollar Tree or any Dollar General, whatever you have near you. Um, yeah, so those are some of the tips for tools and accessories for your pour painting. Up next, I'm going to tell you what I think are my are your three biggest mistakes in pour painting, in my opinion. Okay, guys, so the three biggest mistakes that I think there are in paint pouring, now there's a lot of technical things, but we're not getting to that. Basic stuff is do not buy too much at once, okay? Get some craft paint, get, get a couple of canvas boards, or go to the Dollar Tree. Start small. Just if you want to try for the first time, you do not need all this stuff. Okay, this, like I said in my other video, this is a year's worth of me over a year buying stuff and just experimenting with stuff. Start small. Do not buy a lot and just try it because it's, you're going to be wasting a lot of paint. You're gonna, you know, make mistakes, which is perfectly fine. It's not mistakes, it's learning, okay? That's what it is. So start small. You don't have to invest a lot of money. And if you really enjoy paint pouring, you can just build your collection, okay? And that's it. You just keep on trying different products, new things, but just start small because, you know, I made tons of mistakes in the beginning. That's perfectly fine. We all learn from it. And that is mistake number one, okay, that I think that you need all the stuff to do. No, you don't. Okay, so mistake number two is, now let's say I did a pour and I really, really hated it. It just came out horrible. I didn't mix my paint right. I still make mistakes, okay? What you could do is you could scrape all the paint off immediately and start again. Okay, or I have had, I did a put painting, it dried and I hated it. It dried dark, it was cracks, it was bubbles, it's just the paint was, a good, whatever it was, I hated the painting. You know what I did? I painted right over. I made sure it was dry, I kind of wiped it down, I wiped it off, getting, let's say, any residue of, um, any type of material, like any gloss, that I didn't think we did here, and I just wiped it down and I poured right over it. So, mistake number two is if you think you've made a mistake, you're gonna throw this away. Nope, you can reuse it, okay? And you keep on painting over it. I have a couple of ones I paint over two, three times until I got to my desired uh, effect and a painting that I really, really enjoyed, okay? So, that is uh, the mistake number two is do not throw anything out reuse them okay and <clears throat> excuse me mistake number three is not starting at all okay not starting at all or even when you do start let's say you start and you're just like oh I'm not really good at this you know what keep practicing don't give up um, when I first started I was really bad it was just horrible and I just and I didn't even know not to scrape that I didn't like that I couldn't scrape off the paint. I just threw away canvases. I wasted money. I was getting frustrated. Keep on practicing. And you know, eventually you're gonna get it. There's a lot of terms, there's a lot to learn. So take your time, don't get overwhelmed. Okay, this takes a while to learn. There's a lot of chemical and 
uh, chemicals going on here with the mediums and the different ratios of paint to medium. There's a lot to learn, but don't get overwhelmed. Just take one step at a time and eventually you're gonna get it and it's very enjoyable and it's very, very therapeutic. Okay, so do not give up. Because if I did, I wouldn't have made this and I'm just in love with this painting, okay? So seriously, just keep practicing and just do it. If you want to start something new, you want to learn a new skill and something that's really a lot of fun and very therapeutic and relaxing, I suggest you start it. Okay guys, thank you so, so much for watching today. I hope this was helpful for you. If anyone has any questions, please put it in the comments below. I am going to get to you super, super fast. Please don't hesitate. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. And also, if you are interested in starting your own fluid paint pouring kit, I have a link below for everything you need to start in your fluid art journey. It's a whole kit and you can check it out. It's the link below. Also, don't forget to hit me up on my social media. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. And guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.